the company will be analyzing its HRH, Hill, Brogau, and Hamilton, an insurance broker. An insurance broker that effectively basically sells insurance and earns commission, and we will be using HRH's 2002 10K annual report. So with that in mind, please make sure you have now, a hard copy. We like to calculate basic and diluted earnings per share. First, let's input in the basic and diluted shares outstanding number, again, straight from the 10K filing. So please do me a favor, go back to your 10K annual report and look for page F19, which is note J, F19, note J. So once you're on page F19, note J, earnings per share, or they call it net income per share, let's see which number we're going to pull here. They give you the three years, 2000, 2001, and 2002. And they say, here's highlighted for you, denominator for basic net income per share. And then if you scroll further below, you're going to look, see, look for and to see denominator for diluted earnings per share, assuming dilution, and those will be the numbers you want to input for diluted shares outstanding. Okay, so in 2000, the number we want is 26,224 in the basic. So let's do that. Go ahead and sell F26 now. Please enter that in, 26,224. In cell F27, we want diluted shares outstanding. So let's go ahead and input that in as well. That's the 29,784 that you see there. So again, 29,784, hit enter. Now, in cell F29, we want to calculate basic EPS. As a general rule of thumb, don't just input the EPS numbers straight from the 10K. You should always try to calculate it and not input it directly. Why? just so that you can make sure that you are matching their specific numbers, and any time you don't, you want to know exactly why. And we'll see that right now. In F29, please do me a favor, take net income divided by basic shares outstanding, so equals in F29. Get up to F24, so hit control up arrow one, two, three times in this case. Now, hit divide, and then get yourself to F26, which is taking net income divided by basic shares outstanding, and then hit enter. The basic EPS number you get is 84 cents. Do me a favor. You're always going to have to go back and check against the annual report. Does that 84 cents look good to you? So now I'm just going to very quickly flip back to the income statement and check against 84 cents in 2000. So we're in the year 2000, 84 cents for basic shares outstanding. Basic earnings per share, sorry. So from that perspective, we match. So, so far we're good. Now let's take a look. Let's look at diluted earnings per share in cell F30. Let's say equals, again, the same net income, F24. So hit control up arrow a couple times. F24, net income, divide. Divided by what? The diluted shares outstanding, cell F27. So hit control up arrow a couple times. Hit enter. Now take a look at your number. You got 74 cents. Go back to your 10K annual report income statement and take a look and see if you match that 74 cents to the filing, 78 cents, okay. Now, does it match? Do you say 74 cents, 78 cents, is that close enough? No, it's not, it has to be exact. Now, being exact, you also have certain parameters. If, it, if you have every input correct, but it doesn't match, and you're off by, let's say, one significant digit, maybe such as a penny, maybe that's okay because it could be due to rounding. But now we're off by a number significantly greater. So you know what? This is not going to work. So we have to go and dig now and figure out why we're off. So go back to your earnings per share footnote and take a look. Take a look at this. What do they have here? They have this thing called effect of diluted securities. They had convertible subordinate debentures. And in 2000, they paid 1080 worth of interest to these convertible debenture shareholders. However, we have to adjust for that because if the dilution assumes that they would convert this into basic shares outstanding, in other words, it's worthwhile for them to convert, then they no longer receive the interest on this particular security. So we have to back it up because if they did convert, which is effectively what our diluted shares outstanding assumes, then we don't have to pay them this 1080 anymore. So now, I bet you, we're going to be off by this 1080. So how do you adjust for this 1080? So go back to your statement, and we're going to kind of fudge it a little bit now. And so F30, the 74 cents, do me a favor, hit the F2 function key. This F2 function key goes into edit mode of any cell. Then I'd like you to hit the home key 
And that should get you all the way to the front of this formula. So now hit the right arrow in any case. Get yourself between the equal sign and F24, and here's what we're going to do. We want it to say the following. Equals, open parentheses, so hit Shift 9, open parentheses, F24, which is our net income in 2000. Then we want to take net income and add this 1080. So we're going to hard code this 1080 into net income because this is the only place that this applies. So hit the right arrow key of three times, one, two, three, and get yourself to after F24, but before the device sign. Because what are you going to do now? You're going to say plus the 1080 that we just grabbed from the earnings per share footnote. Now, close your parentheses so you follow the order of operations, and now your formula should say the following equals open parentheses F24, which is our net income of 22,127, plus the 1080 of diluted uh, of uh, the convertible debentures that we do not have to pay them, assuming that they converted. O close parentheses and then divide that by the diluted shares outstanding number. Now you hit the enter key, you have 78 cents. So now we need to check that our 78 cents of diluted earnings per share matches the income statement 78 cents from the 10K. So let's go ahead and do that. Flip back to your income statement, page F3 again. So we're back on the income statement here and take a look. 78 cents. Indeed, it matches. So you're good. So now you know that you got the right numbers and now you know why. So going back to the model now, let's input in cell 